Well, if you ever tried to learn a Johnny Marr guitar riff, one thing that'll happen rather quickly is you'll have a realization that the part you're working on is not as simple to play as it may sound. So to learn more about the style of this very accomplished guitarist, we're going to check out the guitar playing of Johnny Marr on this week's Guitar Blog Insider. You know, Johnny Marr is one of the best guitar players out there when it comes to executing a flawless groove on a guitar riff, yet keeping the part both simple and in the pocket and having it remain uh, on top of everything else understated within the song. You know, he's got this way of playing that's both busy, he's a smooth player, yet, you know, when you look at the way he's organized lines, they're simple enough to just stay in your memory even on the first listening of one of his guitar parts. However, you know, you're going to discover very quickly how solid a player he is when you try and play a guitar riff from one of his recordings. Right away you're going to discover layers and layers of deceiving rhythms, double stop lines and syncopated uh, arpeggiated chord uh, patterns. It's, it all comes together to make him a very interesting guitar player to study. When Johnny Marr works out chord harmonies, he tends to stick close to home on chord changes that reflect more diatonic progressions. And after examining a large group of his songs, the overall consensus that I've come to is that he leans more minor key center rather than the major keys. And this makes sense due to the more popular sounds of the pop rock song compositions and that he uses across the majority of his pieces. So some of the more famous progressions, such as the one in the Smiths hit, uh, This Charming Man, apply minor tonality color while also bringing in some of the relative major tonality. So I've got some examples here. I want to check out some harmonies with you. Uh, I've got three examples. So let's get started with example number one. Well, the chord changes that I'm going to start with here are fairly basic minor key harmony. It's uh, laid out as uh, example number one here, and um, in the chord changes are just going to go from a B minor into the three chord, that's the tonic chord, the three chord is D major, and then we're going to move to the seven chord of the key, it's an A major, and we're going to wrap up into a major four chord, it's going to be an E major, and note that the major four chord, the E, it, it promotes the subtle effect of Dorian mode in here, so just always keep in mind that, you know, while these these progressions they may mostly be diatonic. Uh, you know, he's going to sometimes you know, not really remain exclusive within the basic major or minor uh, sound. So watch out for that. So uh, what I'm just doing is uh, I just picked across using sort of a picking method here of going through the string sets uh, between uh, you know the, mainly the second to the fourth strings. upstrokes and I'm just trying to arpeggiate them a little bit and you know just capture that style of playing that's his and I'm moving through uh, the chords uh, first of all starting a little higher on the neck and then I'm going to move a little bit lower down just to give you an option of some voicings there too and I've got quite a bit of reverb and uh, chorus and some delay on this guitar sound that I'm using. So, you know, start off with things like that, you know, move through chord changes, try to utilize them across multiple positions of the neck and just try to get some uh, pick action going in there, you know, where you're picking across different string sets. You can come up with the way that you're approaching your picking pattern, but, you know, you don't have to get something going on to start uh, simulating the effect that uh, he's using in most of his tunes where he's targeting string sets with some kind of a distinctive picking pattern. So anyway, that's uh, example number one. All right, so once you spend some time listening to the Johnny Marr guitar style, you're going to begin to notice that the sound of the suspended chord as well as the add chord is a fairly common part of his guitar style. And this makes a lot of sense in the sound because he likes those chording approaches that lend themselves to the application of a lot of lush uh, reverb and a lot of thick chorus sounds and all that. He applies those sounds a lot, obviously. And in example two here, what I've done is taken a major tonality progression and it applies some uh, suspended in seventh chords, starts on, on a D major seven, and then moves into an E suspended fourth, moving up to just a plain F sharp minor after that, 
then I did a B with a suspended fourth and made the loop of it. So here we go again. D major seven, E suspended fourth, F sharp minor, B suspended fourth. You can tell as well when I'm plucking through those and using the pick and I'm targeting different string sets to just highlight other strings rather than, you know, just be focused entirely on, uh, you know, one kind of strumming pattern. And you can tell too that, you know, there's not some kind of a, a real groove that you'd have in a, I don't know, a funk tune or even a country western or a folk song. It's not really like that when he's playing. It's, he's highlighting uh, ideas in parts of the chord, almost treating the segments of the chord into individual, you know, clusters of notes. So keep that in mind because, you know, it's a huge part of his sound and it's uh, definitely something to practice and get better in your own playing. Well, you know, while a good deal of his songs will feature minor tonality riffs and phrases, he also enjoys uh, tonal characteristics that are part of the basic major tonality as well. And, you know, I, I was looking through a lot of his songs and found one progression. It was really straightforward. It was just a 1-4-5 rift. It's in a song called Golden Lights. And, you know, in that song, he applies a harmony by way of just a basic E major 1-4-5 progression. But, you know, again, he's coming at it in a little bit different loop. He's not keeping the same kind of format to it like you'd find in a a traditional folk song or something. Uh, he's traveling from the tonic chord of E into the five chord of B, and he's looping that. Then he goes back to the tonic chord again, and then into the four chord. And I just, I believe there's a turnaround in there as well. It's just like a E to B to A, back to E something like that. So you can work on some changes, you know, that are different than your standard movements of 1, 4, 5. You know, it's definitely not a blues progression or anything. So, you know, look at the changes of a 1, 4, 5. Pick a major key, you know, one of your favorite major keys or something, and just try to organize them in a different way. Restructure the typical format that you might find in a lot of tunes of a 1, 4, 5, and do something different with it. Just get inventive and, you know, get explorative with it. So that brings us to the end of the rhythm guitar and harmony concepts uh, that are dedicated to his style. I want to uh, move next into the ideas of his uh, lead playing. When it comes to online guitar lessons, there's no place better than creativeguitarstudio.com. General membership to the site is always free, and paid memberships to access our step-by-step -step beginner, intermediate, and advanced guitar programs are offered in reasonable monthly and annual packages. Skype lessons are also available if you need more specific instruction one-on-one -on -one to discuss the finer details of your guitar playing. Sign up today at creativeguitarstudio.com. Well, the lead guitar style of Johnny Marr is certainly unique. His approach incorporates an almost never-ending cascade of arpeggiated chords that are combined with very syncopated rhythmic styles of performing these picked patterns, you know, across all the chord outlines. And he combines this syncopated rhythm concept with a wide range of chorus and reverb settings from his amp and from his effects units. And on top of all that, he does a great deal of experimentation with alternate tunings. So what we're going to start off with here is we're going to look at a riff in open E major tuning, and it's an interesting, you know, collection of ideas. It's very similar to the lead riff ideas that uh, Johnny Marr likes to play. Well, it's pretty evident in uh, the Smith song of his, uh, the Headmaster Ritual, uh, that he's got some interest in open tunings. And, you know, you listen to a lot of his other stuff and you start realizing that pretty fast. You know, there's a lot of interesting tunings that he likes to mess around with. Now, in the case of uh, this particular tune that I've chosen to pick apart here a little bit, uh, it's uh, got the guitar tuned up into an open E major chord. So what I've done, I've just kept the sixth string as an E, of course, and then the uh, fifth string here has been moved up to a B. 
up a whole step, and then fourth string's been moved up a whole step to an E, and then third string's come up a half step to a G sharp, second string and first string are normal, and then, you know, with this tuning, you got E, B, E, G sharp, B, E, and that's just a big old E major chord up there. Now, with this E major tuning, you know, you, you've got this access now to open string patterns that can be applied around your riffs. So it creates some pretty interesting guitar parts when you retune your guitar, obviously. Now, in example uh, uh, four here, I've got this uh, breakdown where, you know, it's just kind of like a, a rendition of his part from the song, uh, The Headmaster Ritual. And what's happening here is it's kind of broken the rhythm in a little bit different ways. Uh, starting off, uh, I've got the metronome cranked up to 142 on this one on the chart, and I'm going to start off there on the uh, open sixth string and that's going to be a beat and a half with a uh, dotted quarter note there so one and two and three and four so the rest of the measure is all uh, eighth notes uh, riding up into that quarter note at the end there so one and two and three and four so that's the first measure it's kind of laid back with that dotted quarter note up front but after the first measure we're just going to do a run of eighth notes right off the top of the second measure and it's going to go like this one and two and three and four now what's happening there in terms of notes is we've got open sixth, open fifth, and then we're running up second and third frets, just like we had done at the start of the uh, first measure. Uh, and we're going to go around to the uh, same notes there on third string as well. So we'll have first fret, third string, open third string, G sharp. And then what is going to happen at the end of that measure is we're just going to strike some open strings, the top three strings open on the top there. And that's going to be a quarter note at the end. So putting it all together, we've got uh, the dotted quarter note phrase with the eighth notes up front. Then on the second half of it, we're doing a run of eighth notes into that quarter note that uh, takes care of that uh, chord at the end that's the top three strings open. So, you know, you could write this, uh, you know, slower, you could, you know, put it about uh, 72 and you could say maybe these could all be 16th notes. I don't know. I, d I decided to write it as quarter notes and eighth notes and all that just so it was easier for you to see clearly where all the beats are. And, you know, the thing too is once you come into this tuning and you start experimenting with uh, with the sound of new tunings, uh, the Johnny Marr style, remember, it takes care of things in terms of very different kinds of rhythms. So break the rhythms down very differently as well, you know, when you're in these different tunings because uh, the sound of how the rhythm structures are going to all operate, that's a big part of his style. So I still have one more riff for you yet, so uh, let's uh, check that one out next. You know, the chord changes that are used in his songs may be fairly common, you know, from a harmony and theory standpoint, but the individuality of how he performs them can be very difficult to duplicate. And this has a lot to do with the amount of syncopated rhythm feels that he adds across the uh, chord changes using the small arpeggio methods that he's so fond of. Now, in my final example, I've organized a rendition of his syncopated arpeggio approach, and it's kind of loosely based off of his riff in the song of This Charming Man. Right, this is the picking pattern stuff that you've been probably waiting for. This is the real Johnny Marr style. You know, this uh, approach that he has with picking riffs and organizing the outlining of chord changes is just, you know, it's the sound that you really think of when, you know, you think of Johnny Marr. Now, the groove that I've got here for you in this part, it's just going to follow kind of this, you know, never-ending small chord changes in a cycle across a series of rhythm changes here. So, just work slowly with the pattern that I've got for you outlined it's kind of hard to keep up with the groove you know at first when you're trying to play it faster but you know as you practice it more and more you'll get the changes down after some of your study on it now uh, in example five here this johnny marr style chord outline technique uh, it's very syncopated it's a very syncopated rhythm approach that's uh, using a lot of riffs through the song and that's you're kind of knowing this maybe more so as the a similar riff out of the charming uh, man so this charming man so uh, anyway, let's uh, take a look at what th this thing's doing here. Uh, I'm moving very quickly off of the third string with a slide that happens from second fret, you know, over into the fourth fret there. Grabbing up into this third fret, second string D. Then pedaling over into this fifth fret uh, G tone that's off fourth string. Heading back to the D up there. 
And then what you got to do is at the end of it, you got to grab an E traveling to a D on second string. Okay, and then it kind of starts off in the second measure fairly similar. But he jumps over into the round, into the third beat there. And he does a small double stop chord, a seventh fret and fifth fret, top two strings. And then he walks up into the next chord by going seventh fret, third string, and then fifth and seventh frets of the second string. That's going to lead him into a small, uh, it's going to look like an outline of an E minor up there. And he's pedaling around that area, so he's mostly working within the triad. Just that straight across, uh, sort of, you know, diagonal shape like that. But he's walking up, you know, he's taking the 8th fret and the 10th fret to walk up there. And then he's going to cycle it a little bit again. Hit the 2 note chord, slide forward with that one. And then walk down on the 3rd string, 11th fret, 9th fret, 7th fret. So it's a little bit more in terms of uh, in position playing, it's more in position with that triad being the main focus of the second half of the riff here. But um, it's just the rhythms, you know, it's, it's, they're so syncopated and, you know, abstract. So, you know, that's the toughest part to get down really is the rhythms. I mean, the notes that he's playing and how they're set up on the neck. I mean, there's really no big deal to that. I would say as much as you can, try to pick everything. Uh, me being such a uh, uh, big believer in hybrid picking, I'm forcing myself not to do any hybrid picking with this. But, you know, the, the sound of Johnny Marr seems to be very much based upon the flat pick. So, you know, watch out for that. <laughs> So you can come up with some of your own ideas with this too, but uh, the, the main idea with this part is it's just a syncopated rhythmic approach. It's very similar to what he's jamming out in uh, that song by the Smiths, the, This Charming Man. So uh, if, if you take this approach to your own playing, outline a lot of small triads, keep the rhythms very syncopated, you're going to start sounding in a short period of time just like Johnny Marr. You know, Johnny Marr is one of those guitar players who's able to produce parts that have a noticeably unique sound to them from his varied types of open tuning that he likes to apply and how he incorporates, uh, you know, just other things like capos as well as all the different effects with that, you know, wash of chorus and reverb that is such a big part of his sound. You know, he has a style and you know a guitar tone that's recognizable regardless of the band he's playing in and over the years he's worked in several top bands you know he had the Smiths of course everyone knows him most uh, definitely for that band uh, but he was also you know the Pet Shop Boys, uh, Talking Heads, The Pretenders, uh, he uh, did something with Beck I remember, uh, Modest Mouse who was one of his more recent bands he's even worked with Paul McCartney so you know this guy's no slouch check out his stuff uh, you know check out his songs and try and you know play some of his parts. It's going to do wonder good for your guitar playing. Uh, anyway, I'd be interested in hearing your thoughts on all this in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and we'll catch up again next week on my other channel for another episode of the Guitar Blog Insider. And don't forget to visit creativeguitarstudio.com. There's loads of information on there if you're studying guitar and you want to get really good. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Improvising a rock lead is a must-have skill for every guitarist. This lesson plan shows how to combine seven-tone scales, arpeggios, and pentatonics to create more interesting rock solos. The focus throughout the lesson plan is placed upon using embellishments like slides, vibrato, bends, hammer-ons, and pull-offs. As a bonus, a complete rock song is included for jamming over at home. Rock lead soloing is available for instant download in the View Our Products area at creativeguitarstudio.com. I've got 25 years experience teaching guitar and have written a well-organized step-by-step guitar course. Head over to my website at creativeguitarstudio.com and sign up for a free membership today. Join the thousands of members worldwide who have already enrolled. There's no need to try learning the guitar on your own. Let me help you become the best guitar player that you can be.